Hi, Chantel. Hey, Roxanne. Welcome, cousins. We just had a really good interview with Kim D. Chantel, we're going to play it right after this. But what do you think about the interview? I always have so much fun talking to her because she really like, you know, it's energetic and she loves to She loves to like, you know, say her truth and what she wants to say about a topic and her opinion, like, which you guys will hear. She says like, you know, it's my opinion and it's an opinion show. So I think yeah. that's always entertaining. And you know, I, yeah, she owns it. I think it's a great time. And I think we have, we all three have a good connection. So it was a great interview. And I think we, we learned some stuff. So that was nice. We learned a lot about, I mean, Roxanne, you can talk about this, about, you know, her whole meetup with Teresa, which I think everyone was really wanting to know how that went. So that was really exciting to hear, you know, that whole meetup and what they, what they did. I'm just happy that she, cause she's said things about Louie. And I said that in the interview that I don't agree with. And I'm just happy that she was able to meet him in person to see that he is actually a really great guy. And we know this because when even when we were at BravoCon, everyone kept coming up to their like all about Terry H girls. Dude, I met Louie and he was the best guy. He was talking to us. He made sure he didn't even have to. So I just feel like this guy really came into this show and his whole life got flipped upside down. And then even you had Kim D who really never knew him or met him, you know, say some things about him. And she finally got to see things and she didn't, should we talk about it? She apologized to Louie and stuff like that. But again, Kim owns what she does. So I really liked that we got to hear how it was with Louie because I'm glad that she got to see the side that Chanel we know and that he is such a nice gentleman and a great husband. You could tell just with Teresa. Oh yeah, absolutely. She it's brought up the confirmation. <laughs> yeah, he did bring up Jim. Uh, actually, Jim is Teresa. Chantal was like, I feel like we should remind people that Jim is Teresa's attorney because she brought up how he was the reason uh, behind getting them together. So just so you know, Jim has been a part of Teresa's life forever. Jim's yeah. also a really great guy. So, uh, and he's been on the show. I mean, they're good. Like, obviously they're yeah. probably like, you know, family friends at this point because like, you know, he's been with her for so long, but like, yeah, when she mentions the name Jim, it's that's the Jim that she's talking about. Yeah. It was really interesting to hear her takes. I thought it was a great interview. We're going to actually do something monthly with her moving forward. Uh, especially when the show comes on. So we both can share our opinions because it's, Probably going to be a little bit different, but there are some things that we al align with. But I thought overall the interview was really good, and she shared some things that we didn't even know. Yeah, so we hope you guys enjoy. Hi, Kim. Hi, ladies. Hi, Kim. How are you? Good. We We're were so just... good now that we have you on. Yes. <laughs> We Listen, were just I know that they about... want us together. The people, want, exactly. the people have asked, and now we're giving them what they need. We were just saying that we're going to all, we're going to probably commit to like a once a month thing, especially when New Jersey comes back, where we all do a podcast together because you guys love the All About Tear H Girls and Kim D together. And we love doing it with Kim D. So we just we made are a commitment, cool. everyone. Um, yeah. I think, like I said, <laughs> you know, we can do it randomly now, but once the show comes on, exactly. May 5th, I think we should definitely, um, you know, do something once a month. I think people would love it. Yeah. Well, Kim, we have a lot to talk to you about. Yes. I can't wait. I'm sure. Yeah. So you yeah. actually recently made headlines for your meetup with Teresa. Please tell us how that came about. Okay. So last season, while they were all filming, um, James and I had been speaking. A couple of the girls, um, to our mutual friends, Jacqueline, Siggy, Dolores, they all had uh, talks with Teresa. They'd be out for dinner or they'd be on the phone and they'd be like, you know, you got to make up a Kim D. And she's like, I don't know what I did. Okay. So two of them knew. And the other one calls me up and says, what happened? And I had told her this before it was Siggy. And I said, Sig, this is what I was told. And I was very hurt. Blah, blah, blah. Because Teresa and I, which I'll talk about the lunch, how she reiterated what I'm saying we're extremely close, okay? When Teresa, the first couple of years when we were filming, I'd be on the phone with her till like two in the morning, falling asleep while she was still folding clothes, okay? <laughs> we'd go for dinner, we'd go for lunch. We were very close. Kristen and I would go to her house. We'd clean closets. It was a fun, we just had fun. We're Taurus, we're both Taurus, okay? She knew Michael. With that said, now everyone's getting involved. Dinners are happening. 
he, James says to Teresa, I'd like to call Kim. James likes the podcast. He was listening to Kumasi Kim, okay? And he likes my opinion. And he said, you know, I'd like to talk to her. Of course, Teresa would, she, he was never going to do that behind your back. He right. continues to talk to me. Teresa wanted to invite me to filming to her podcast when she was doing the podcast, among other things. But there was a loss, um, a, a case going on, as you girls know. Um, and they knew that I knew uh, the ex. I don't even want to say the name. And my name was thrown around in court a lot, okay? Things that I had reported. So it wasn't the right time, okay? So then I'm still going on my, you know, talking and whatever on my pod. I start my own podcast, I'm talking. And then they're like, we really would like to get together. Would you like to get a, I said, I would love to get together. You know, a real makeup session, not talking about what I have spoke, you know, spoke about before, not about the fight that Teresa and I have had, which made great TV. It made great TV. So right. we both said that. But we legitimately wanted to make up. And I think she wanted to look me in the eye and tell me that she didn't do what I thought she did. So I finally get the text, a, a three-way. It was Louie, Teresa, and James. And they said, they asked me to do them a little bit of a favor. I did. It was not a big deal favor. And we were very grateful that you helped us out. We'd love to take you for dinner. Um, and so it first started out for dinner and then it went to lunch because Teresa had to go somewhere on Monday. Mm -hmm. And that's how we did it that Friday. Yeah. And then we could, you could ask me questions about that too. But it was legitimately to make up. Nothing to do really. We talked about the show a little bit. Nothing to do with the past to make up. And when the two guys were getting the table, Teresa stopped me midway and she said, look in my eyes. And I did. And she swore and she repeated, I never tried to get you off the show. Now, something did happen that was said, but it wasn't exactly that. So she wasn't directly the problem. Do you understand what I'm saying? It was the makeup with the family. Now, what do we do with Kim D? You know, so the producers took it upon themselves to tell me that Teresa said, I don't, I don't really want to film with Kim anymore. That's not the way it was said. Well, because Melissa and Joe at that point probably didn't want you to be involved because oh, you were team Teresa or, I mean, you guys did have that fight. The one thing that I do have to ask Kim is that you, so you heard that Teresa was the reason behind you not coming back. Why you're a straight shooter. You confront the situation. Why not confront her then and there when you heard that? Okay, because we had had a conversation before this while we were filming, and Teresa had denied that this happened. Okay, she was like, no, you know, this didn't happen. It wasn't said. The, the whole bunch of people while right. I was filming told me. So I really felt like, remember, this is going back like um, 10, 11 years. Right. So I kind of had lost, I was losing trust. You yeah. know what I mean? You know, when you lose, so I was losing trust. So I'm like, now I'm off the show for the one year I'm off. And I'm like, and I'm putting two and two together. I'm like, yeah, I'm sure the Gorgas, they made a deal, blah, blah, blah. And I was, I don't get hurt that often, but I loved Teresa and I believe she loved yeah. me. And I think, I still think to this day, she didn't go as far as to get me off the show, but I think she had to make, she had to make a decision with her family and the show. Yeah. yeah. I make a deal with the devil, you know what I mean? Which, listen, a lot of us in that position would have to do it. Your family, your parents are alive. So yeah. I see it with different eyes now. You know right. what I mean, girls? Like, right. years go by, you get over it, and you say, you know what? You, you realize what happened, and, like, the hurt goes away, and you're like, you know what? I'm over this, and I want my friendship back. Yeah, you know, that's, that's basically what happened. Yeah. Absolutely. The most um, requested question was, what were your thoughts on Louie? We love Louie, by the way. So, Kim, you know. <laughs> okay, no, 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 no. I'm not going to say anything bad. Okay. Well, <laughs> but I'm but speak your you, truth. No, I'm going to speak my truth. I'll tell you exactly what happened. <laughs> okay. So, we sit down, and I said to Teresa, when did this start happening? Like, you were so tough, and you never let people see you sweat. So like as a girlfriend talking to her yeah. and she goes, they're hurting him. They're yeah. hurting him. And he said, like you did, meaning me. I'm like, oh my <laughs> God. I go, Louie, come on. You know, so we went back and forth on a couple of things. And I said, listen, did I ever call you this kind of name? He said, no. Did I ever say this? Like, you know, like bad things. He said, no. I said, so this is my job. You know, I am going to say my opinion. 
I go, yeah. I don't, I really can't sit here and say I dislike you. I said, how many did I say on my show? He's a great father. He was very good. I think that he was very good for, he's a good influence on Teresa. I said, my accusations to you, my and I'm allowed to do that. I, you know, this is what I do for you. He goes, you know, you're right. I said, now, I put it like this in perspective to him and he got it. I said, if Teresa's filming, and the filming is not going right. There's no drama. There's no, what happens? She gets tapped on the shoulder and she has to bring something up. She said, yeah. Is she going to say no? He said, no, that's her job, right? He said, yeah. I said, I don't want to be mean to you. I said, I happen to think the main things that a man should be, a good husband, a good father, you are. Is there certain things I'm not crazy about? Yes. I'm still going to say I might not like your jacket or I might not like what you said, or I'm going to do that. I'm not going to change. He goes, that's okay. And then it was funny between the two of them. Imagine upgrading your wardrobe with luxury essentials at unbeatable prices. Quince is here to transform the way you shop with a range of high quality items priced within reach. Like 100% Mongolian cashmere sweaters for $50. I have one in brown, you guys, and I wear it weekly. I'm not even joking. Once a week I wear it. I'm sure my coworkers are like, okay, get a new shirt. I do need to buy a new color. Organic cotton sweaters, washable silk tops, and timeless 14 karat gold jewelry. The best part, all Quince items are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. I also bought these look-alike Ugg Tasman um, sandals that I got, and I wear them all the time. They're even more comfortable than the Ugg ones because I have the real Ugg ones, and I also buy my mom them during Christmas. So if you guys need two things from Quince, get this sweater that I always get and those sandals. Indulge in an affordable luxury. Go to quince.com slash TRH for free shipping on your orders and 365 day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash TRH to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash TRH. Ladies, did you know that one of the most common complaints from women about their sexual health is a frustrating low libido? Our sex drive can decline, but it's also treatable. Addy or Flibanserin is FDA approved and has been clinically proven to increase sexual desire in certain premenopausal women who are bothered by a low libido. So if you feel like you've lost your desire and want to get it back, stop falling for the snake oils and ask your doctor about Addy today or go to Addy.com. That's A-D-D-Y-I dot com. Addy is for premenopausal women with acquired generalized hypoactive sexual desire disorder, HSDD, who have not had problems with low sexual desire in the past, who have low sexual desire no matter the type of sexual activity, the situation, or the sexual partner. The low sexual desire is troubling to them and is not due to a medical or mental health problem, problems in the relationship, or medicine or other drug use. Addy is not for use in men or to enhance sexual performance. Your risk of severe low blood pressure and fainting is increased if you drink one to two standard alcoholic drinks close in time to your Addy dose. Wait at least two hours after drinking before taking Addy at bedtime. Your risk of severe low blood pressure and fainting is also increased if you take certain prescriptions, over-the-counter or herbal medications or have liver problems. Low blood pressure and fainting can happen when you take Addy even if you don't drink alcohol or take other medicines. Do not take if you are allergic to any of the ingredients in Addy. Allergic reactions may include hives, itching or trouble breathing. Sleepiness, sometimes serious, can occur. Common side effects include dizziness, nausea, tiredness, difficulty falling asleep or staying asleep, and dry mouth. See full PI and medication guide, including box warning at addy.com forward slash PI or call 844-PINK-PILL. Ask your doctor about Addy today or go to addy.com. That's A-D-D-Y-I dot com. I go, and you used to, you, you know, you dropped my patron. He goes, well, she made me do it. Meaning Teresa, you point star. She made me, she goes, yeah. I said, what are you listening to her for? Well, we all laughed. And he, I go, Louie, I need you back on. He goes, I go, I need your $10. She goes, I'll be back on. So it was cute. You know, it all turned out to be okay. Because when we thought about it, we thought about the silly things against the not, like the thing, the nice things. You know what I mean? I'm always going to say my shit. And, you know, he got it. He got it. And I said, you know what? Maybe I'll soften up a little bit because now I like you. Now I got to yeah. meet you face to face. And I said, you have to admit, I did ask you to come on several times. And he had mutual friends. I really want to meet him. Like, I want her to see me for me. I want her to meet me. So I took him at his word. You know, I took her there to really... And even James is like, we're here to go forward. And he agreed. You know, he agreed. No, he goes, you, um, we're going to go forward. So, but I think like he just had to say like you did, you know, it was really funny. So, yeah. And I didn't take comfort with that. I didn't take comfort with that. Did you, so was, did you apologize to him at all or no, no apology? No yeah. apology. <laughs> I want to, yeah, no, no, no. You know, I can't do that because then that means that 
I'm sorry, like, I'm not really, I explained to him, I'm who I am. And at that moment in time, I had my opinions and I didn't say anything that can get you in trouble, God forbid, jail or trouble. Or I go, I didn't say that you're a bad father or that you, he goes, he goes, you're, yeah. so I'm going to continue to give my opinion, you know? So listen, if I had done something to get him in trouble or I would say, oh my God, I'm so sorry I got you in trouble, but that's not any, that's not the case. So there was no apologies. There was no apologies. <laughs> Are you still speaking to sorry. that person, the ex? I have not um, we text because okay. I think she saw everything. And I said, listen, listen. And I said this at the table. I am not going, I'm not going to come on and talk smack about her. I'm not going to, I'm not here for this. And I'm not going to turn against people that I, you know, I'm not doing that. So basically we left it on the table that I'm staying out of it. You know what I mean? Okay. I'm saying, and I, I told her, I, I don't want it. I don't want anything to do with it either. You know, she knows. And I said, I think this all should go away. It's all got to stop. They Did you tell her that? Too. Yeah. Well, I told her a while ago. It all yeah. needs to stop. This is what I said. And I told him I felt the same way. And I had told James to write it. I said, this all has to stop. This is all a bunch of baloney. Everyone has to stop. If everyone stops, it'll go away. And yeah, that's what right. I think it should. Teresa and Louie are very happy in their life. Okay. Yeah. And this is an ex. It belongs on both parts. It belongs an ex. And that's the way, that's what I really feel. Yeah, absolutely. And I hope, I you hope know? more people start but to I'm feel that way. Say, yeah, but you want to know something? Women would really even lose respect for me. If all of a sudden I make a Teresa and I'm like, bink, 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 bink about someone else that I spoke to. I can't, I'm not that woman. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, no. I'm not going to do that. Do I like, do I like what was going on? No. No, I don't yeah. like what was going on. I made it very clear, but I'm not going to turn around and talk smack it now. It's, it's, and then it'll just continue. You know, well, the story, that story would just continue. Louis won the case against the ex, and we're going to see it play out on the season. So, what are your thoughts knowing that he won against the ex? And I do think that Louis and Teresa both could care less about her, but she's the one who won't end this. So what are your thoughts first off of him winning the case? Well, you know, I don't even like to, um, I, I don't like to say when I'm going to tell you why I believe in this situation, nobody wins. It shouldn't have happened in the first place. hundred okay? percent. No one, no one wins in this. You know what? Should, all of this nonsense should have never happened in the, the first place. Louis had moved on. He's married to Teresa. All this stuff should have never happened. That's where I stand with that. And I think that if Louie has a truth that's coming out with this case, that should be seen also. Because yeah. everyone heard the other side. Of course it should be seen. Of course. You know? And then I hope at that time, because now there's new allegations from the attorney, I hope it just goes away for Teresa's and Louie's sake. And for the yeah. ex's sake. It's got to stop. Yeah, I'm sure it's not healthy for the ex to harp on this. So, no. Yeah. No. Um, and I'm going to tell you something. Teresa, yeah. it affected her. And it, why should it affect her? She has four daughters to take care of. She does all these shows. She works like an animal. I even told her, I go, I can't believe how much you work. What do you need this aggravation for? And she don't. She really wants it to go away, I think, even more than Louis, because it's nonsense. It's yeah, nonsense. Absolutely. You know? I agree. One of so our as a friend, I don't want this for Teresa. As a yeah. friend, you know, so totally. one of our listeners asked this. They said, Why does your opinion and attitude towards Teresa change depending on who you interview? As a tough I one. don't think it's on who I interview. <laughs> I think it's my feeling at the time and what I see. Um, you know, I I I don't I people say I flip-flop. No, it's just that I'm very opinionated. Yeah. And so one minute I might think this. Or if I don't like an outfit, I'll say that. That's just what I do. Now, yeah. I just did the timeline. I don't know if you saw these, these. some of these things I didn't know. So I did the timeline as to what took place between the Gorgas and uh, Judices and Louis. And I said, wow, this is interesting. And my whole panel thought it was interesting. And my listeners did. So there's a lot of things that yeah. people don't know. So when I find out information, that could change my mind. You know, it could and change I my mind. And I can't change what the other person's saying. You know what I mean? I can't change that. Like when I do it with Dana, 
I'm not there to change her opinion. She could say whatever she wants, and then I'm going to make my opinion. You yeah. know, yeah. I think yeah. that's where I'm pretty sure that's where the like people see who you're interviewing, and they're just yes. like automatically like enraged and saying, "Why would she interview that person? She knows what that means." And then if you go and yeah. like, that's probably where the flip flopper comes. But we yeah, interview but people that people something? don't people don't like, so it it is what it is. Sometimes when you're interviewing, yeah, and I'm not going to stop that. Okay, I do the Correct. live with Dana. We both say our opinions. Um, you and I, you, the two of you and I might not agree on something. Does that mean I'm going to say, oh, no, we're not going to do our lot. We're not going to do our thing yeah. once a month. That makes it better. This yeah. United States is filled with so many different opinions. OK, we're not one person We're we're a lot of us are opinionated. That's why you do the show, girls, because you have an opinion and you're smart. Yeah. OK, I do the show. People like to hear what I have to say, too. That's what I get paid for. So I'm not going to say, oh, I can't, you know, interview this one or I, I can't because they might say something somebody doesn't like. That's not who I am. I want to hear what they have to say. So, well, you did an interview recently with one of the thirstiest house husbands that we <laughs> have, <laughs> have, ever, have ever seen come on the show. You did an interview with John Fuda, a.k.a. Bravo Lover 1234's um, husband. Okay. Do you feel like you should have challenged the narrative he was pushing out more? I no, I mean no, because I believe some of the things he said. Okay, and it's his. It was his day in court. It was his day there. There was a lot of accusations thrown at him, and he had the right to come on my show and to defend himself. And there were certain things that, like, I would have. You know, I can't tell a person how to speak about another person, okay? Yeah. Whether it's his baby, you know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not, um, you know, a priest or a psychologist or whatever. I'm not going to sit there and go, oh, that's not very nice. You said, so I still believe that he had the right to come on. You know, you got to remember, he was just at BravoCon. They showed the trailer and there was a lot of accusations thrown around. That's right with the time that he came on my show. He wanted to talk about his truth. You know, so and and I you know, and I'm friends with John Fuda and everyone at the table. Uh, a couple of Fridays ago, they know that. You know, and I said I'm not gonna not be friends with people because you don't like them. Your fight is not my fight. Yeah, you know, I agree so with that for sure. I don't think anyone should ever insert themselves in the right. fight because once they get back together and they're friends again, then you're left out. So I get that. Our listener asked, did he set boundaries before the interview? Because no. his vision of events seemed very convenient and I felt he was left unchallenged. Nothing. Okay. Nothing. And the same thing I do. Like I said, John, I'm not going to give you my questions. He goes, I don't, I don't, I'm fine. You know, I said, I'm going to ask you what I want to ask you. You say what you want to say. There was no, we never had to stop. We never had to edit. Nothing. It was just done. You know what I mean? It just, I, well, I wouldn't do it. I yeah. wouldn't do the interview. You know, I really wouldn't do it. So, um, you know, I, I'm going to be doing a lot more interviews throughout. I'm not a big, I don't really care about getting interviews on my show. Once in a while, I'll have someone. Mostly it's an opinion show with my, you know, uh, talking about the different, like we're going to do one on what I just watched the Wendy Williams documentary blew my oh, mind. That and was wild. Really so, sad. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. have my opinions on that. I'm gonna have my opinions on Lala getting pregnant with no father. Yeah. The, you know, remember, I'm an old-fashioned girl. I'm a lot older than you girls. So I have my opinions on things yeah. that people want to hear. So right. my next show, because somebody was really funny. Somebody says to me, Oh, are you ever gonna do a show that doesn't include Teresa? I'm like, yes, but not today. <laughs> but not yeah. today, you know, because I have to do the timeline. Yeah. So it's all you know what I mean? So it's my show is really not. Um, interviewing people, you won't see that too often, but you know, there's a few people I'd like to get on. So we'll see from there. Yeah. Did you ever interview Rich Wakili? I know you said you were going to. Yes, I did not. Um, okay. So are you going to, our listeners ask that. Okay. Here's the, the truth. Rich Wakili was going to come on. Yeah. And I don't know if you girls know, he had some issues on yeah. Instagram. Yeah. And Kathy and I spoke and they all went off of social media for a while, the whole family. And it just wasn't the right time for him to be coming on a, on a show. So once maybe when all this clears, because I will not discuss that. Yeah. I will not, I'm not, I don't get into it. We don't want you, trust me. We don't no, want you. I don't do that. You know what I mean? Either. We don't either. So once maybe that clears, maybe when the show comes on, let's see. 
he would love to do it and I would love to have him, but that's, it was a bad time. You know what I mean? It was, it was not the right time to be interviewing him. Well, people were really underwhelmed by the interview with Kathy that you did. Not because of you, but because of <laughs> Kim's laughing, guys, if you're not watching. Yeah, this. yeah. Um, what, do you agree that it was a little underwhelming based on how she was answering questions? I believe that, yes, yeah, certain people come on and they don't reveal everything that I want them to reveal. Yeah. You know, so, like they you hold back. That. Yeah, and I think Kathy was very ambivalent about doing the show. Very ambivalent. She really wasn't crazy about doing it. She did it for me because we're yeah. good friends, okay? Yeah. So I, she's nervous. You yeah. Know, look what happened on social media with her husband. Like, I get it. Me, I don't care. You know, me, I don't care. People threaten me, I threaten them right back. Like, somebody <laughs> just threatened me on IG. Like, if you have my name in your mouth one more time, because my grandfather and my uncles were big boys, like, you know, I I'm not going to be so nice. Don't threaten me with a good time, honey. Yeah. Don't, don't threaten me with a good time, yeah. you know? Like, I love that. But other people really don't want it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I come from a situation where knock yourself out. You want to threaten me, say whatever you want, do whatever you want. My son feels the same way. So I'm a different breed, but I get when someone's a little more timid. And I really honestly believe that's the reason why Kathy was a little, um, I don't know, like maybe so uh, forward in her answering. You know what I mean? Maybe yeah. she held back a little bit. So you girls could be right and your listeners could be right, but that's the reason. You yeah. Know, she's not abrasive like me. You know? Yeah. No, that makes sense. Yeah. Are you um, still in contact with um, Kim G or Danielle Staub? Okay, so this is funny. So I reached out to Kim G and I said, Kim, we're like, we're family. Like we're sister-in-laws, of course, they're divorced. And said, we really should get together and have lunch. And she goes, you know what? I really miss your mom. She was very close to my mom. Aww. And I said, I do too. And we're supposed to be having lunch or dinner. Um, she doesn't want any of this. You yeah. know, so I said, oh. Kim, we would have so much fun. Like <laughs> I, if you came on, you know me, I'm like trying to manipulate it. If you came on... <laughs> We could have fun, you know? So let's get the lunch out of the way first to the dinner. And then maybe I could talk her into it. I would never put her on the spot and make her feel uncomfortable. But I think it would be fun. I think people would love it. It'd like, be a great, great, great throwback for yeah, sure. It would be why do you think she doesn't want to? She came off really bad in the beginning seasons and she is probably scarred. Do you think that's why she doesn't yes. want to? Yeah, because she found some peace. But don't, don't you remember just recently when the 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 information came out on people that were saying they knew who went to the feds or to the you know i yeah. know when it wasn't um melissa and joe she came out and said that so like when you want to stay in the background you don't do that so that's why i'm like you know what kim uh, yeah yeah you're so right about yes. that <laughs> exactly why comment at all right so you know what why don't you say it at that point, by the way, because we're doing a rewatch, so Kim G is just, oh my gosh, she really did come across like really bad, just very thirsty, putting her nose, and it's just, it was so uncomfortable for Chris Larita, her son. Were you sister-in-laws at that point? Yeah. yeah. Wait, so you guys were still married to the same, like to brothers? She, no, she was married to my stepbrother. My, okay. my mother's okay. husband, at my okay. mother's husband, uh, Tom Grandisell, had five sons. I introduced Kim. Kim was my assistant manager when I, years ago, when I was like 16, 17 years old, and I went to work for Pants Place. She was my assistant manager. And she speed skated and she snow, you know, she was really good athlete. And so was he. And I said, I think the two of you would get along. And well, a couple of years, a lot of years later, they got married and had three kids. Then Danielle Staub and I had met Jacqueline. Um, everybody met. My Michael met uh, Danielle. He wasn't thrilled. And um, he said, I really don't want you filming with her. Like, I really don't, you know? So we can do what you want in your private life. But, uh, and so Danielle wanted me to come on with her. I'm like, you know, I'm going to film, but I can't. I told her the truth. So she's like, okay, can you introduce me to Kim, Kim G? I said, of course. And Kim G loved it, you, as you saw. You know, mm -hmm. she, you know they, they loved her. Yeah. And I think while she was on, she made good TV. Because whether you're thirsty or not... If you get them going, like when we were both drinking out of the same cosmopolitan glass at Teresa's party, that to me is fun stuff. You know, yeah. that we had fun with. Yeah. So, um, but then she was asked to leave. She was invited to Melissa's party, the Christmas party. Oh. They knew she was bringing that woman. Oh, I'm the, sure. They, they knew. We, they yeah, knew. I doubt that. Then they embarrassed Kim and the yeah. woman, asked them to leave, and then Kim was never back on the show. They got rid of Kim. 
you know, you so could tell them they were, were, you could tell they were embarrassed to even do it. Cause like they probably knew what was happening, but then they had a gun, pick this, pick a side at that moment. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So have you, you have remember production too, that does, I show, know. You know, Oh, trust yeah. me. Yeah, we know. Yeah. So, so as far as Andy Cohen, he has been on making a million headlines right now with people saying he may be a little bit inappropriate. Have you witnessed any behavior from Andy? I know that you would see him at reunions, but you also went to his book signing. <laughs> I think it was like- Oh, I've seen him out socially. I mean, okay. we, I had gone to um, 54 Below uh, and Luann Delaseps was performing and I was invited upstairs to the green room. That's when you see him go, Kim D's here, Kim D. And then Luann's coming like to bother. Yeah, Kim D, Kim D. I have never experienced inappropriate behavior. I have seen, I've watched Andy when he makes the phone calls and he's drinking, you know, I mean, and I see him on New Year's Eve, I see him drinking um, and Brandy, I, not for nothing, I, all of a sudden now it's indecent. If you speak sexually or whatever to Brandy, I don't go for any of that. Yeah. If he was going to be doing any kind of cocaine or blow or whatever, he would have been doing it up there in the, the green room. Okay. There yeah. was no signs of that whatsoever. Yeah. Zero. And we were there for a long time. It was me and Kristen and we were hanging with them and having a drink and no signs. He was never inappropriate to me. Um, I, I truly believe, first of all, he apologized for what he did with Brandon. He apologized. But yeah. the other stuff, you know, making people drink, you know, do they say like, oh, like years ago, open up the bottle of wine, this and that. But I don't know. I think, you know, Bethany Frankel had started all this. And I think there's a lot of people who want to get on the bandwagon. The mm -hmm. people that started out on these shows, um, things were different then. You know what the show's about now. It's 13 seasons. It's 14 seasons. You want to go on and you're an alcoholic, right? But now you want to blame them for falling off the wagon. Yeah. I, I just don't buy it. I yeah. don't buy it. I just don't. And I what think he's a good guy like Andy. Yeah. Yeah. What are your thoughts on Dina's ex charges getting dismissed? I have scoop tonight. I, okay. I can't give it away. Hey. I got my twenty dollars <laughs> Patreons that are paying. Yeah, you can support Kim. <laughs> Listen to me. This is not over. It's the only tip I can give you. So if you want to know what's going to happen next, okay, tonight girl. seven o'clock. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, this isn't over. This yeah. isn't over, girls. Don't be fooled. Don't be yeah. fooled. It's not over. What are your thoughts on the new lawsuit against Bo and Louie? Well, I mean, first of all, I want to I want to see more of what happens. I asked Louie about that. He goes, nothing, you know, it's, it's not true. Nothing's going to happen. Um, one person say they have proof. The other person says they don't. I mean, all I know is if you're a private detective and you have to do private detective work, I mean, I don't know if that if they have proof about computers and all that. I really don't know. You know, I really don't know. I don't think it's I don't think anything's going to come of it. That's my opinion. You know, um, I'm I sure this, this guy, Kevin Johnson, feels that he was wrong. They had put him on the stand and they really I heard they did a number on him. So, um, you know, he's going out. He's going back after them. You know what I mean? So we'll see. I mean, we'll see what they have. We'll see. I can't comment on something that. Um, if he has proof that that Bo's detective agency did this, you're not allowed to do this. Now, does that mean Louie did it? No. If they have proof he did it, they have to show proof yeah. with the computers. I think that's the only real issue is ch hacking into computers and all that. Yeah. Yeah. What are you the most excited about for this um, upcoming season of New Jersey? You're not going to like what I have to say. Uh -oh. I, I believe, because remember... I go back from when Melissa and Joe came on and I believe what happened between me and Teresa, Teresa was because of this. Okay. Yeah. I have a bone to pick. I'm, I have things stuck in my craw. Okay. I want the truth to come out on both sides. I want everyone to see that, that I've been saying that the relationship was never, and I believe it was fake. And I believe that things were done on Teresa's end because for parents and I think things were done on the Gorga side because of money and a paycheck. Okay. So I want what I want vindication and my vindication is going to show the true hate, which I don't promote hate. Don't get me wrong. This hate was from a long time ago. 
and all the phony bullshit that I couldn't stand that I was now Teresa's enemy because of, uh, it's, I'm going to I'm going to be proven right once again. So I know that's not what people care, but I'm honest, and I'm not going to sit here and go. Ooh. Yeah. It's like I want the honesty. I want the true hate to come out so I can say, see, told you so. Well, so what we That's can tell what, you, what we can tell you is that I I can totally see you wanting that, but from what we know from just our inside sources is that they don't really have any interactions with each other. So if they don't no. have much interactions with each other, then what are we going to see? We're not going to really see hate. We're going to see Joe talking about them behind their yeah, back. Well, that's what I wanted to see. I, they're okay. not They're Listen, I they're not, They don't interact. They, they interacted at the end. It wasn't very good. I want to see the real Joe talking shit. The real Melissa finally talking shit. Okay. I want to see Teresa finally fighting back and yeah. finally yeah. saying her truth. That's what I want to see. Not fighting to get, you know what I mean? We already saw that. Remember when Judice okay. and Gore got no, out yeah. the fist fight? We saw that, okay? We saw the christening. We saw that. I want to hear the truth. Say your truth. Right. Say your truth. What is your status with Margaret Josephs currently? I don't have an issue with Margaret right now. I don't. Do I like certain things that she did? Do I still have my opinions on things that she did on the show, things that she did to Zicky, things that she did with Teresa, rumors that have been put out? But when I came on my show, when I started my podcast with the Jersey crew, I said, again, remember different things that are being said off camera about me maybe possibly coming back, back guest starring. I don't want, if I come back, I don't want to be on the show enemies, 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 enemies. No, well, I yeah. want to come straight forward, straight forward, um, at an open door and make my own opinion. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not taking on Teresa's enemies. I'm not taking on Siggy's enemies. I love Siggy, and I don't like what was done to her, okay? She's one of my dearest friends. Um, but if... Yeah, Siggy you, loves me. Do she's always friends? said great things yeah, about Yeah, I adore me. her. Yeah, yeah, I adore her. And that nothing will ever come between us. But I do want to come on neutral, but that doesn't mean I'm going to stay neutral. It just means I'm going to give every, everyone a shot. You know, I'm not going to come on and go, I hate this one. I'm not going to be... You know, I would really love to come on straight up the middle and then decide, you know, what I like and what I don't like. Because, you know, I'll see it from a mile away. So we'll see what I happens. Feel like, I feel like Danielle Staub kind of did that when she came back the second time. She came back neutral, but it didn't work out for her because now no. she's saying that no. I left so many things unsaid and her chance is like gone. So maybe not too neutral. So that's your warning. Oh, well, yeah. that's not going to happen. <laughs> oh, no. Listen to me. You think I'm going to leave things on set? Listen to me. The right. split second. That, first of all, when I watch the show, remember, everything that people are talking about with me is coming later on down the road, if it even happens. Okay? Yeah. But I'm going to watch the show first. And yeah. I'm going to have my opinion. My opinion can change before we, before, if I ever get a guest appearance or whatever, they can change. We got a long right. way to go. You know, we'll talk about that. But right now, I really want to come in just straight up the middle. Like I really do. Um, I don't think Melissa and Joe are very pleased with me. I know Joe said to food, I up with that girl, you know, that girl. And, um, you know, I don't see that happening only because Wait, I you cut off a little. What you, you cut know, off a little, Kim. Yeah. So tell us what about a girl. Oh, he, yeah, he said to John Fuda, Joe Gorga, I want to make up with that girl. Make oh. Up. Oh, so Joe wants to make out or make up with you? Not make, not make out, make up. <laughs> Maybe he does want to make, make out. out. With you. No, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm sure he so, has something very nasty to say about that. You know, but no, he had said this about a month ago. <laughs> Yeah, you know, he probably go, oh, you know, fuck you, whatever. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, who cares what he says? But, yeah. you know, again, I don't see if I came on, let's say I come on in eight months, whatever, as a guest appearance, I don't see him coming strong with me at first. I do believe that everyone's going to be tiptoeing around. You know what I mean? Like, well, where is she coming from? What is she going to do? Whatever. So, I'm not saying I don't hate anyone. I never hated anyone and I don't intend to hate anyone. It's too much energy. Okay. So yeah. um, 
do I like a lot of the things that he does? No. And now that I saw the timeline, also what happened with him and Teresa, you heard the my reel. If she sent the bottle for the for the um home, the housewarming, I'd be like, no, don't send anything. So look how strong my opinion was there. That's how fast it changes. Right. Yeah. Well, I actually agree with that about the sending. I don't think that he deserved anything. And I don't think she should have sent the bottle either. Correct. Correct. So we're yeah. with that. Yes. Uh, um, <laughs> what do you think about yeah. Danielle Cabral? Okay. Like, I just, you're, you're cutting I off just a don't little see bit. her fitting in. Like, she's on an island. I can't, she just, she's not on the team, Teresa. She's not on the team, Melissa. She's just on an island. Like, I don't see she's any on team close Danielle. bonds with anyone. Yeah. Yeah. You see her going far on the oh, show? I, I really don't. I don't think so. I just don't. She just doesn't mesh. You know what I mean? She doesn't mesh. It's very hard to infiltrate Jersey. She just doesn't mesh. But again, we could be wrong. You know, I just don't see it. I don't dislike what? her. I don't like her. Yeah. So I don't have, I just, she's insignificant. The brother stuff. The what? The brother stuff. What do you think about that? I think if they brought that on, it might be a storyline. You know, I'd like to know why. I think just by what I see of her, um, I have a feeling that she has a very strong personality and she probably pissed him off and pissed off the sister-in-law. You know? Would yeah, you not like her as a sister-in-law? Do you what? Would you want her as a sister-in-law? No. She's not likable. <laughs> yeah. Like, she's not yeah. likable. Yeah. Like, I don't dislike her. I don't like her. She's just not likable. You know what I mean? There's just something about her that's not likable. And again, I'm not sitting here talking smack, not like, not dislike, not likable. I just can't even put it yeah. into perspective. Yeah. And from what we know, honestly, like the brother um, and his and his wife, there's there's not a chance that they're going to come on the show. So, I mean, but money talks. Yeah. But from what we what we've heard and know that th they do not like have zero inkling yeah. of liking the media, but or liking to be in the media or attention. So. But yeah, I would love to see that. probably would be the same type of storyline. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I would like to see the, again, you know what I'm about? I like the truth. Tell me the truth. Exactly. Yeah. Come on, yeah. tell the truth. Why don't you like her? You know, I think right. even if they come on, like, I would see if I, would, I don't care. If I was the sister-in-law and she did some really shit and Danielle Cabral did some really cra shady crap to me, I'd get my ass on that show. I'd say, right, pay me for one time. I'll come on. And I would. <laughs> Yeah, because Danielle started it by talking about them first. It's not like they're being messy or shady. Whereas in with Teresa's situation, she invited her brother and Melissa to events while filming, spoke good about her family, and they still came behind her back. Whereas in Danielle has brought this issue on the show, and we I don't want I don't want the issue if we're not going to be able to hear the other side. One thousand percent. That's yeah. exactly how I feel. That's exactly how yeah. I feel. So you went to Columbia Pizza. I hope I'm yes. saying that right. To check yes, out their Columbia Pizza. Pizza. Excellent. Okay, yeah. I want to go back. Excellent. Okay. So you went there to check out their pizza, pizza ovens. Did they go into detail about how they stopped Joe Gorga from stealing the idea? Because he brought that idea to Louis and Louis didn't know about this like pizza place. Did they say anything about like the pizza oven yeah. stuff? Yeah. They basically said that the idea was stolen from them, that they, you know, was there. They don't really want them there, the Gorgas. Uh, they didn't say anything about Louis and Teresa not coming back. You know what I mean? Because I know Louis and Teresa still buy food from them. I think okay. they realized, and I said this to them. I said, why don't you just get together with Louis and, and sell these ovens, you know? Right. And they're like, yeah, we should, we should. And I had That's asked the good. owner to come on, but I think he felt uncomfortable. You know, they don't really like the limelight too much. I said, it's really silly that it's not, I personally said this from the beginning, I didn't feel it was Louis' fault. I don't think Louis knew, which I think Joe Gorga knew. Joe oh, Gorga knew sure. they had the ovens. Louis did not. A lot of people just said it was a silly thing anyway. And I think Louis just wanted to do something with, with Joe, you know, yeah. so for his sister. So right. again, um, you know, again, this is what I said from the beginning. So that's why when we had the, I had the conversation with Louis, like I said, you know, basic, the basic things the good things that I said should outweigh the bad because the basic things I stuck up for you. 
you know, whatever. And he's like, no, you're right. You know, so I said, I don't believe that you knew anything. And then I asked him, where are the ovens? He goes, uh, Teresa said they're in, you know, so they gave them to some woman and she has them stored. I said, well, that's a shame. Yeah. You know, that's a shame. So. Absolutely. A couple yeah. of my people said, I'll take an oven. We're cracking up. So when yes, yeah, so I'll take an oven. Can I have a couple ovens to give over. out? I'll give them yeah. out to my Instagram people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Kim D's going to do a giveaway with pizza. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do a podcast yeah. giveaway. Yeah. How do you yeah. feel? How do you feel about all like um a lot of housewives having a podcast? Do you listen to any of them? Is there someone that you like to listen to um with all the housewives having a podcast? I really, you know, I'm not dissing anyone. But I don't because, yeah. you know, I'm, I have to say I'm a news junkie. So I'm constantly watching the news. Yeah. And then also I am, I watch movies, you know, and I'm with my dogs or yeah. I'm out. So I don't have, I don't have the, the time. I just don't have the time. And if you know, girls notice, I've been doing a lot on social media. I'm trying to build up my fashion vlog, my, my social media that way. I have Barbie living with me now. Um, and I really want to go in that direction. I just was so excited. I got this business cameo for skincare. Things like that excite me. That's what I'm yeah. looking to do. You know what I mean? So yeah. I don't sit and listen to them. I hear you girls when it comes on the reels. Um, I hear some of Tamara. And who's the other one? Oh, my God. The one that I hear once in a while. The couple. Rick and... Uh, oh, um, a Kelly. Yes. Yeah. Rick and Kelly. I Kelly see Dunn. them come up on my feed. So that I, you know, that I'll listen to. And I love seeing that. And I get a lot of info from that. You know, yeah. I get my info from you girls. I get my info from that because yeah. I'm not constantly reading up. And some of the things people tell me, I can't report. If, yeah. yeah. I hate it. I, and I can it. vouch for you, Kim, because I know that you're not like on social media like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, because I remember when, when you first joined Patreon and stuff, like you had told me, you were like, I don't, I don't know how to go about this. And nope. You weren't like as tech savvy because you you did tell me I watch the news like I'm watching real That's TV it. you know so I can yeah and you got to remember I'm a lot older than you girls yeah so on my on on the other ones Patreon when I used to do that I never listened to myself I didn't even know how to go on so yeah. if I knew how to go on I would have seen that he was right. you know making all this you know because I would have had to pay yeah do yeah. you understand what I'm saying so. You know, I just, it's not, again, it's not that I'm not interested in what people have to say. I'm more interested right now, or I've always been a news junkie. My conversations that are on the phone are to judges, politicians, um, a lot of men. I speak to a lot of men about sports. You know, I have a man's yeah. brain. You know yeah, what I mean? So, that's, yeah. That's good. Yeah. yeah. So that's what, that's what my day is, you know, <laughs> yeah. Bobby's here all the time. She could tell you yeah. one time, maybe we'll put her on an interview for a minute. This phone doesn't stop um, with, you know, a lot of my influential friends that we talk about business. We talk about politics. We talk about um, sports, you know, all stuff that I love. Yeah. We do have uh, one last question for you. Oh, boy. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, okay. So what are your thoughts on the Caroline Manzo lawsuit? I got inside information on that, too. So okay. I'll give you a little tidbit but I'm going over that tonight also. Um, I heard that when she got there, she was very uncomfortable. I think she thought that she was going to be like the peacock, like, oh, Caroline Manzo's making a comeback. And that's not the way she was welcomed. Mm. The other girls were kind of snickering about her, not making her feel that welcome. And oh, my dog's getting sick a little bit not making her feel that welcome and um the puppy and that's how it started that's can we how it started can we tell you what we heard i we would heard. love to hear what you heard so we heard that it was completely the opposite that she was acting great acting fine getting along with every single person every no one had one bad vibe about her feeling uncomfortable and that, well, that I heard too. Yes. Yeah. About the yeah. uncomfortable. Yes. Yeah. Laughing, laughing, yeah. having a good time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I had heard. But she was, I have to tell you, she was not, un I'm not talking about the sexual innuendos. Right. She was uncomfortable. I might have to get up for one minute. One yeah, minute yeah, that's first. okay. Just give me a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me one minute, okay? Kim's going to check on her new puppy. Yeah, no, she's yeah. looking at a little guy. <laughs> Okay, 
Yes. I heard she was laughing, thinking everything, acting like it was funny. But she also saw the other women, like, they weren't accepting her. Like, I can't explain. Like, you know, if you're, like, um, in a new school or you, yeah. and, and you, you see the people, like, ha, 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 snickering. Yes. She expected to be the big um, person on the show, like, because she thinks a lot of herself. Yeah. Caroline Manzo thinks a lot of herself. Um, I, so I, I personally do not believe everything that she wrote. I don't believe that Brandy, um, did everything the way she said she did. And I think that Br everyone knows Brandy's Brandy. So if I'm asked to do a show, okay, let's say I'm asked to go on one of these trips and Brandy will never be asked again. I don't think so. And no. I know someone like Brandy's going to be there. Okay. Do I think that there's not going to be any sensual, sexual innuendos with Brandy being on the show. So she talks about, yeah. you know what I mean? She, so you got to make, when you're making these decisions, okay? I was asked to do Worst Cooks of America. And I'm not the worst cook, but, you know, whatever. Yeah. I didn't want to leave my dogs. <laughs> I didn't want to leave them. Right. So I've had to say, is it more important for me that I want to leave my dogs? My anxiety will kick in, this and that. So if I'm asked to do this show, Okay. And they say to me, all right, we're going to give you a hundred thousand. I'm going to, I'm probably going to do it. We'll so wash your dogs for you. hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> I'll go do the show. And if I know Brandy's going to be there, I know that there's going to be sex talk. I know that there's going to be trying girls trying to kiss each other. So for, let's say I'm in the bathroom with Brandy, right. And they lock the door and Brandy tries to kiss me, which she probably wouldn't, but let's say she does. I'd be like, listen, girl, you could try all you want, but you ain't getting nothing here. I haven't had sex in 11 years. You know what I mean? It's just not going to happen. You got the wrong bitch. Maybe you should pull somebody else in here because it's not me. Right. That's how you handle somebody like that. That's, yeah. that's all. You know, listen, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, yeah, I find this to be, um, you know, I'm flattered. You know, you say I'm flattered, but this ain't going anywhere, girl. Yeah. That's how you yeah. handle it. That's yeah. how you handle it. So yeah. it is what it is. Yeah, that's how you handle it. And she just, Caroline, you know, oh, she had um, flashbacks of her childhood. Well, that's a shame if that really yeah. happened. A lot of and, the things, some of the things were sad, but a lot of the, some of the yeah. things you're just like, it's not adding up with what the yeah. other girls are actually saying that were there. So it's like. I agree. I yeah. agree. And I think Brandy got a bad rap. I think um, Brandy was embarrassed by what they did to her. You know, the producers made her go home. And um, I think they should have took sent, sent Caroline home. Yeah, not Brandy. Like you want, you can't handle it. Can't take the heat. Get out of the kitchen. Like go. You right. basically, you know what you're when you go with certain people, you know what you're signing in for. You know, yeah. Like, especially someone who's been in the game for so long. Well, we were also told that she said quite a bit about Dina and Tommy, and that's still an ongoing case. So uh, when she got home and probably told Albert, it took two days for her to go ahead and file a lawsuit or file a complaint or whatever the heck she did. And it's probably because he's like, you can't comment on an ongoing case on this show. This is a big deal that could put my brother behind bars for a really long time. So yeah, I that agree with you on that too. That we heard. Uh, but yeah, I agree with you, know, you on that too. I believe, that. yeah, I believe that this was a um, well thought out way of getting her stuff off the show, yep. getting her ass back home. And out of there, okay. Mm -hmm. um, that I really, I I believe that a hundred percent. I'm with yeah. you, girls, on that too. Yeah. Well, yeah. Kim, we appreciate you joining us. This has been Thank requested. You. Chantal had gotten married, so we've been all over. But this has been congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, Thank like, you. Please, yeah, Kim D, please. We love when you guys are together. So we promise our listeners we will do this monthly thing, and we appreciate you joining us. We love hearing from you. And can I so just fun. say one thing? Can yeah. I say one thing? Okay, so everyone's asking me what happened between me and you, okay? Yeah. So I want to just say that I had heard rumblings. I'm not going to use the words or anything that was used, that someone came to me on a DM. And the first thing that I did was text Roxanne and said, I gave you the definition of what this word was. I said, did you say this? And Roxanne said, we never, we, and I was only questioned about we never talked bad about you. We love you, Cam, blah, blah, blah. And, I, and she goes, I'm at my cousin's wedding. And what did I say? 
have a great time. Tell yeah. your cousin congratulations. Yeah. And we squashed it. So you all know, yes, there was an incident. Yes, someone said that they had said something to Roxanne. And I questioned her, just like what I would do with anyone else. We're, I big, on, her. we're big on receipts. We want receipts. Like when people say that thing, we realize that a lot of people try to stir up stuff. But yeah. we are big on receipts. So if, you know, yeah. saying something, show us it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So that's what happened. So I want everyone to know. And then, you know, Roxanne had come to me and said, you want to I go, of course we'll do it. Of course. Yeah. And I had mentioned it on my uh, YouTube live that we're fine. And, yeah. you know, cause I'm not getting involved in this blog blogging worse stuff. And I said, we're perfectly fine. I lo love the girls and we're good. And let's do this. Yeah. So Thank I want you. to end with that. <laughs> yeah. And I had a wonderful time. And as of May 5th, I think we should do it once a month. Yeah. Yes. Let's do so it. Fun. Let's, I want to hear from our listeners about that too. They'll be so excited. They'll probably want more. Oh, You're probably so All right, cute. girls. Thank so you. Cute. So much. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye. Hey, everyone. It's Chris Frangiola, and I'm the host of your new favorite podcast, Cover to Cover. Each week on Cover to Cover, I scour the world's newspapers to bring you the craziest stories in fashion, music, pop culture, food. You name it, we give you the comedy angle on all of it. If this sounds up your alley, listen to Cover to Cover on the iHeart app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.